Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar on how to do 1 billion authentications per day. I'm Mike Schwartz, founder and CEO of Glue, and these are the this is the link to the presentation um, https colon slash slash glue dot co slash one b dash webinar dash slides. So if you want to see these slides you can check that out. You can also look on the on Glue Federation LinkedIn page or Twitter page, and we'll have a tweet up about this presentation. So a couple of um, days ago, we put out a press release about the, an achievement that we were very proud. Um, we we managed to benchmark the Glue server at a throughput of one billion logins per day, and that includes both. Um, simple logins where we just send the username and password to the token endpoint, but also more complex logins where we're actually doing a true open ID connect web authentication, which includes rendering a page, getting the credentials, sending back the code, trading the code with client credentials for tokens and using the token to obtain user info. So a, a true web authentication actually um, requires more transactions on the backend database and it's harder to do. So the how we did this benchmark is actually documented on our in our docs. Um, you can see this link here which will pop up a couple of times. Um, the link I just covered with by moving my mouse it's um, glue.co slash 1b dash docs. So what really made this possible were two innovations. The first innovation is Couchbase. So we needed a, a better persistence mechanism than, than LDAP. We needed something that was horizontally scalable. And the second innovation was cloud native tools, especially containers and Kubernetes. So you might say, well, I have an LDAP server, so I could um, just scale LDAP. And it's theoretically possible, and, and here's how you would do it. You would, um, the, the main bottleneck with um, LDAP is going to be the right performance of the disk. So in order to get more performance, we need to put more disks to work. So we could do that by splitting the data into multiple replicated topologies, and then we could put a proxy on top of that to distribute the load. Um, the reason why we need to have these multiple replicated topologies is that if we had one big topology, a right transaction would be replicated to all of the replicas, and you'd be constrained by the right performance of basically one server. So in order to reduce, to increase the throughput, we need to make sure that those writes are not replicated to all the servers, and that's why we have to break the data into multiple pieces. So this is, can be done with an LDAP proxy. And there's another consideration, which is caching. So we'd have to, um, we don't want to write everything to the disk to increase performance. There's some things like the code and the authorization code flow, where it's only a one-time use code. So there's really no use even writing it to the disk. So to, to maximize performance, we want to make good use of caching. But if you're scaling the caching, it, let's say, and you have a multi-data center topology, you also need to think about how do you achieve high availability on the caching infrastructure. So at Glue, we, if we have a recipe for using a Redis and for using TWEM proxy or a, some type of load balancer on top of the, the caching infrastructure also. So why, can't, why doesn't this make any sense? Well, it's not possible to auto scale. This is the main issue. If we want to break the data up to add more capacity, we actually have to manually export that LDIF and re-import it back into the, or to create this, a new replicated topology of servers. And it's just too much manual work to do, um, to do on the fly or to, or to do automatically. And um, also it's, it's so hard to do this that in order to set up this proxied topology of LDAP servers, you can't do it on the fly. So you basically have to have to build to your maximum capacity. 
and maintain that, you know, for that rare instance when you actually need maximum capacity, you'd have to have it ready and waiting. And it, in, in LDAP, the, the query index and data service are all bundled together. So it, even if I maybe said, well, I, I just need to add more compute power to my index or query service, I can't really do that without adding a whole new LDAP server. And the, the other real problem with scaling is we're scaling two infrastructures, both the persistence and the caching infrastructure, and that also adds to the, to the cost and the complexity of the solution. So you're getting an idea um, why, why Couchbase helps us, because Couchbase combines both the database and, and the caching or the persistence, the disk, the disk and memory, you know, database into one um, easy to manage unit. It also automatically distributes data. So if we add in new data nodes, then Couchbase automatically handles um, replicating or or moving the data around and distributing it and setting up the replication on the back end. So we don't need a lot of human intervention. So the database side is essential, but we also needed innovation really on the, um, on the deployment side. And this is where cloud native comes in. So in the past, Glue has had um, what we call community edition, and that is a distribution of the Glue components um, deployed on VMs using traditional Linux packages. For example, uh, let's say Ubuntu, um, Debian, CentOS, uh, Red Hat. We have packages uh, for all the above. So, so oh, let me go back. So the cloud, um, it's, and and that um, addition is is still available. Um, but we've we've worked on a new um, distribution called the cloud native um, edition. So this is this is called CN. We've um, it's been named a couple of things over the last couple of years, but we've we've settled on cloud native as as the best way to describe it. And cloud native includes not only containers but also Kubernetes and Helm and a, a new approach to distributing the services and automation. And so community edition is CE and cloud native edition is CN. So this distribution is 100% open source. Um, we had been um, some ideas about maybe how to license, but we landed on a decision basically to just open source the whole platform. So that means that the code is open source, the binary uh, binaries are open source, for example, the containers, and also the deployment assets like the Kubernetes and Helm files and the shell scripts and the other things that you really need to make it easy to deploy these containers and set up this cloud native deployment of the Glue server. So um, this is a sort of a high level view um, of how we set up the the, the um, benchmarking. Um, we were using Nginx for ingress, in order, in other words, to route the, the requests. You could also use the Amazon application load balancer would be okay too. And so one of the one of the big challenges for um, the cloud native edition was breaking each service into its own container. So this is sort of a high level view of the containers. OxAuth is the main, um, that's the OAuth authorization server. So that, that's the one that we're really going to auto scale uh, or focus on auto scaling. That's really the web tier. OxTrust is an admin um, server. You don't need a lot of those. And um, there's a key rotation container because when you have a lot of OxAuth servers, you, you need to make sure they all have the same keys. So we have a service basically that's handling key rotation um, to push the keys out to the servers. And um, the other, the other um, components of Glue have also been uh, containerized and they're available for you to, to deploy. So on the, um, um, now a lot of um, vendors out there, when they talk about their performance, they really are talking about a simple username password authentication. And when we did our benchmarking, we actually wanted to look at that all as well. We wanted to see sort of before we throw in like the, the the web transactions, what's sort of the, the, the baseline performance of the, of the Glue server using the uh, what we call the uh, resource owner password credential flow. 
Um, this is the password grant in OAuth. It's it's the most it's the simplest um, um, flow that you can test for performance because you're sending the username password to the token endpoint. The the well, the the OXAuth server is validating that against the database and returning a response. So it's basically the easiest uh, flow you can do. And and my experience is that a lot of the vendors who are um, reporting results are actually really just reporting results for the simple flow. Um, so in order to uh, attain a billion authentications per day, you need to do a sustained rate of about 12,000 um, transactions per second. In this case, we showed 13,600 transactions per second. In order to generate that load, we needed also to include a, um, to basically generate the load um, by automating um, the creation of the clients themselves. So we used a um, we JMeter test, and these JMeter tests are also public. They're in the Glue GitHub repository. In the OXA, there's an OXAuth project, and in that project, there's a JMeter folder, and you can see the the JMeter tests that we that we used. Um, it took us a hundred pods in order to generate the load. And another interesting detail about the load is we wanted to make sure that we weren't just authenticating the same user over and over again, um, because that would be just testing the performance of the cache, not the database. Um, and so we made sure that our, our JMeter tests were actually exercising um, different um, database pods and um, to really like stress the performance on, on the persistent side. In order to achieve this result, we had um, to use a number of, of nodes. So on the, on the persistent side, um, the nice thing about Couchbase is that we can break up the index query data and analyze, um, had to um, spool up a number of OxAuth servers. So OxAuth is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. It's receiving the web request, it's the database um, request and returning the response. So OxAuth, and that stuff's a lot slower than, than the database transaction because um, you're talking about HTTPS. So. Anyway, so it took us, um, in order to get the sustain rate, it took us uh, 100 um, OxAuth servers. Now, again, these results are, you can, you can actually um, see them. They're also on this um, glue.co slash 1b-docs link. It's the glue documentation for um, how you can re um, replicate these results. Um, so this is uh, what I thought some more interesting result which is how do we actually do a billion web authentications per day? And that includes rendering the login page, processing the login page, um, returning the code, um, having the client um, trade the code plus client credentials for a token, using the token to get user info. Basically, we're saying 12,000 authentications per second web authentications actually uh, requires a database capacity of 60,000 transactions um, per second. And so in order to generate this much traffic, it took us 500 client nodes, you know, generating those requests. And it took us quite a bit more resources on the, um, uh, on the website. So actually it sort of makes sense, 12,000 versus 60,000, that's about five times as many servers. So especially on the web services side, the, the numbers um, sort of make sense. But 500 servers, that's a lot of servers. So if you have to build your capacity for a billion authentications per day, and you have that sitting around doing nothing most of the time, you'd be wasting a lot of money. And that's why auto scaling is, is just so important. You need to be able to scale to the capacity that you need at that time. So, that sort of um, wraps up my um, my presentation here. Um, going back to the um, you know the first slide, just so you can see the um, um, the link again, um, if you want to check out the slides. Um, and uh, if that was helpful. Please follow us on the um, on LinkedIn or Twitter. We're Glue Federation. And if you have any questions, um, please reach out to us, and we'd um, love to help you deploy an authentication that scales um, to a billion authentications per day.
Thank you.